Welcome to Math Powerline. I'm Terry Van Oy. Uh, in this video series, in using trig identities, we're now at some problem sets for you to try. And when we use a trigonometric identity, we're either re going to rewrite an expression or simplify it in terms of, instead of multiple trig functions, maybe just in one. We're going to try to write the expression as simple as we can. Sometimes we might even be using it to solve equations. And as you'll see, one example of um, even proving or verifying other identities and formulas. Grab a piece of paper and a pencil and let's give them a try. All right, here's the first problem for you to try. We have 4 minus 4 sine theta multiplied by 4 plus 4 sine theta. So multiply it together, use the FOIL method, and see if you can do some substituting and simplify the entire thing. All right, good luck. Alright, we're going to be using the FOIL method here, and let's do the first terms multiplied together. 4 times 4 would be 16. And then we have the inner terms here, which would give us negative 16 sine theta. And the outer terms here, which will give us a positive 16 sine theta. Those would be opposite terms, so they would drop out, wouldn't they? Finally, we would have this term multiplied by that term which will give us a negative 16 sine squared theta. All right, so let's go ahead and factor out a 16 out of each term because that's our common greatest common factor. So it's 1 minus sine squared theta. And I think you'll see a familiar pattern here. Is there something we can rewrite 1 minus sine squared theta into? Yes, with our Pythagorean identities in this group here, notice that 1 minus sine squared theta can be substituted by cosine squared theta. There we go. So our final answer is going to be 16 times cosine squared theta. That is the simplest form of our starting expression. So we multiplied it out using the FOIL method and looked for a chance to substitute and there's our answer. All right, I hope you did okay on that. Let's look at the next one. Here we have cotangent theta times secant theta times sine theta. And we are verifying the identity. Now when it says verify, the idea is that we either take the left side and work it through and try to make it equal to the right side, or somehow make the right side equal to the left side. Now it's gonna be easier, of course, to work with this left side and see if I can get it substituted and rewritten so that it does equal 1. We are verifying this identity. Pause the video and give it a try. All right, let's look at our reciprocal identities and figure this out. Well, I notice that I have cotangent, which can be written as cosine over sine, and I have secant, which can be written as 1 over cosine. All right, now here's a, a kind of something to remember. If possible, you want to boil all these expressions down into sines and cosines. That's basically at its simplest form, if possible. So in this case, we're not going to be changing cotangent to 1 over tangent. We go ahead and flip it over and write it as cosine over sine. So we're going to use these two substitutions right here. So cotangent theta is going to be cosine theta over sine. Secant is going to be 1 over cosine. And let's go ahead and leave the sine theta as sine theta, but it looks like we can think of it as a fraction, so we'll put it over 1. Now it's a simple matter of canceling our common factors. And I noticed that everything else is um, canceled out. So now we have certainly verified that that is an identity that it is equal to 1. All right, that was problem set 2. Now the next video is going to be a pair of questions for you to practice even further. So look for that in the next video. That will be problem set 3. Thanks for watching.